Hey folks, I'm checking in um, early on a Saturday morning, the 8, 17th of July. Today is someone, oh, Joe Budenholzer, who I, um, I don't know where Joe is now. He did move to New York a long time ago, but um, it's his birthday. He's an old bandmate of mine, but some of you probably have his work. If you have, um, he's worked with Coil. Current 93, he's on an album with Lydia Lunch, and he has his own band, Backworld. I've performed in Backworld Live, but I'm not on any of the records. <coughs> That's my friend Joe's today, his, his, his birthday. But you know, I talk about people who are significant uh, to me in the music business who pass away. And so I'm, I'm here to pass the marking of Biz Marquee. Now, some of you might be surprised because, again, if you're surprised, it's because you've done what most people do, is you've made a judgment about me based on what you see here. And you might have been watching me for the whole time I'm here, and you've heard me ha have different feelings about hip-hop, you know, mainly about the exploitation. And so you get the impression that I don't like any hip-hop. It's just not true. Of course, like I try to share with you all, we all see through our personal lens, and no matter how much information we give each other, we can only end up with our impression of it. So what I'm saying is, Biz Markie was the bomb, and he was one of the old school rappers that I liked a lot. I never bought any of his albums. I didn't go dig it up. I do have one of his singles. It's not the one that everyone, it's not the hit. I didn't give a shit about that. What's the, it was kind of like a silly love song in a way, something like that. The single that caught my attention about Biz Markey was The Vapors. And the other thing about Biz Markey that really uh, I relate to personally is that he is a big, goofy looking guy who just has been himself. You know, he he found a way to value himself or at least step through the world in a way that it appears that he liked himself and did what he wanted. And consequently, he spread a lot of uh, joy and good feeling among people, not only through his work, but a, as a personality. I saw um, on um, one of the social medias, um, Questlove from The Roots, who I've met and talked about records with. It was a long time ago, but see, Biz Markie was a collector too. And uh, that's what Qu Questlove was saying, that Biz turned him on to some a whole lot of shit. I love, there's this one um, common thing that Questlove says in there, in the tribute to Biz Markie, he says, Biz would call up and say stuff like, so Quest, you heard this sample, da 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 on this one, you got that one? And he'd laugh, and, and when Questlove would say, what's that, what's that, ha ha ha, click. Well, one of the ones that Questlove shared is, so Quest don't know about the wobble, yo. I forget what all he said. And the thing Quest said is like, Biz caught me up short again. I, I didn't. I got the wobble. I got it. I know my shit. I'm. I do. I'm not. I'm not a know-it-all. And I like how Questlove put it. So, but Quest is, a, is one of those guys who wants to know it all, and he says it. I, I you know, I think of myself as a bit of a know-it-all. It was funny. I got it, and he did. Well, he's probably got it by now. The wobble. So I know my roots and I love my people. I hate the exploitation and I hate that that um, institutional racism that has painted the entire history of this country has kept black and brown people at the point of just really um, chomping at the bit for material wealth and, and stuff. And it's... Um, it colors our our culture and people's behavior in ways that I just hate. 
I'm not a slave to money. I was just talking to, uh, I'll drop some names, Jimmy, not music, but just about what's going on with me. Jimmy Thomas, who runs Thomas Funeral Home, turns out he was a classmate made of mine in junior high. Of course, I kind of knew it, but I forgot. But when I went to um, pay for my brother's cremation yesterday, well, even before, doing the day before, doing going for the first meeting to set it up, it was l wonderful to just relive. He brought up all these old memories, you know. Oh, you remember so-and-so? Oh, I, no, I remember you, you know. And um, I guess um, what I was getting at yesterday, um, it's the same thing, you know. It just brought up a lot of memories. I love, I love black people. I love my people. But you know, I think I'm overall doing pretty good. I just realized here that I had a million thoughts and lost my train of thought totally, you know. It had started trying to talk to you about Bismarcky and meeting Questlove and all that. So what I want to say uh, also here for folks who may not understand this or are new, are new to this channel, this is not a show, okay? Higgs Corner was a show that we would like to bring back. This is my life. So I'll be talking, I talk about whatever I want to. I just lost my baby brother, so do you think I'm just going to all of a sudden switch off talking about that for the sake of the audience? Y'all better get the fuck out of here, okay? This is real, okay? I'm going to process this as I need to. Part of it will be, is, is, is here, you know, making these videos I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy sharing with you very much. I'll share this with you because I, I hope you watch this, Gary. I'm so glad, uh, due to unfortunate circumstance, that he, we have broken some ice that built up between us because of politics. I love Gary like family. He is like family. He played with me and my brother. And because of the political bullshit, we were estranged. Hadn't talked to Gary, literally. For a couple of years he called yesterday. It done, did my heart so much good, Gary, if you see this. Okay, I love you. Like a brother. He's the cat on drums with me and Pat in that video. And uh, Patrick and Gary have share some deep history outside of me and the, the trio. So I'm really glad you're back in my life, Gary. I really am. I really am. I missed your presence in my heart, even though you're there, but there was pain. I got some CDs in to, re to review. These are going to have to wait until my head... I'll tell you that I haven't opened this one, Rich O'Mara. Okay, thank you. These are from, from some uh, a fellow who knows me, but I don't know him. But he goes back, I guess he was a kid during the, on the punk rock scene, early days of REF Cordial Spew. And he sent me some music, and he's like, will you talk about it, you know, if I send it to you? And this is going to be tough, uh, Tim, because I popped one of these on, man, and this is this ain't for me, okay? I think that might be all I want to say about him. Thanks for sharing it with me. But you want, I know what you want me to say, and I ain't going to say what I, I'm not going to manufacture a, a fake response to this music. So the best thing I can do is just leave it and wait till I'm in a better space, come back to it. Because when I put it on yesterday, I'll just tell you, Tim, if you're watching, it's like, that ain't for me. It's for somebody, but that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. I'll keep going. I've been doing this for so long that people have gotten the gist of what, I, of what I'm into. And so what people send to me over the years has gotten more on point as to, okay, this is the sort of thing that I like, or this is, you know, this is an example of someone who knows me and wants me to talk about their music. 
they didn't send it because they know that this is what I'm into because it ain't okay um, I'll show some records although the only thing I've been playing for me and I, I, I said it online you know, on Facebook so I'll say it here I have been playing Miles and John Coltrane for the last couple of days for Patrick for my memories for me but for me emotionally the music that's just helps I don't cry is wish bill Catherine will remember I was talking about this it is so funny to me how my life is because we're connected and we do have um, sensitivities that a lot of us are don't pay any attention to this music called out to me a couple weeks ago play wish bill play wish bill and I've been playing it it's been played every day since then and this is my least favorite well it was my least favorite album but now it's like the, the song here I love but the song lifeline on here it's not all of the words it's just enough it's the music the music is perfect for what I what I'm needing needing but it's there's 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 lines it about life lifeline and it just fits how did I know that I needed this song somehow I did and when I pulled this recently I had forgotten that my copy is autographed I got it autographed by the band the last time I saw them it must have been up in Minneapolis I think or maybe not but I got it signed so let me see if I can easily just spot well yes right here here's an here's music that I share with my brother and my brothers it's gonna be pretty obvious some of the music that I share with my brothers because I talked to my older brother and he's in ill health too and he needs to stay alive okay then I can do about it though but he's not in good health but some of the music that my brother and I absolutely love and I'll show my original beat up copy from when we were kids Herbie Hancock crossings this one is my favorite but Patrick dug that too but he really dug sextant and Mwandishi let me grab it this is the one that my older brother James turned Patrick and I onto that just set our heads aflame. I still remember the first time I heard this. There are certain records like that, aren't there? That have that much of an impact. Right now, I can see myself and my older brother. He had left home. He was still a teenager, but things were just out of control. So he left home and he was living in a garage with some friends some musicians crazy but amazing musicians um walter who ended up playing with rose royce car wash he was one of the cats <laughs> see this brings me joy to share but i remember one of my first or most significant visits to the the garage place where my brother lived this was on the box and I wasn't there long before it's like, what are y'all playing? What is this? Blew the socks off of me. This is my original copy. I bought it as quick as I could afford to buy it, okay? So this is a green label. This is not a this is not when they put the uh, street um, label on with the palm trees this is an original copy taped together with love listened to by me and my brother Patrick literally hundreds of times did we ever jam on this did we ever do the ostinato thing hell yes hell yes damn that shit thank you for the lovely comments about my brother um on my Facebook page, if you follow me, I uploaded years ago, I forget this, but years ago I uploaded 
one set of tracks by the Pat Higgins Trio because they're all original. I wrote one song with my brother Pat, not really a song, a tune, and we call it Pat's Tune. That's on there and a couple others. Yan Hammer, this was right there. It was Mahavishnu Orchestra that we really vibed on, Patrick and I. But Yan Hammer too, because Yan Hammer is so soulful. And Patrick loved this album. Jerry Goodman and Yan Hammer's Like Children. Yeah, we burned a hole in these records, okay? See, that's the beautiful thing that I like about the fact that I'm still grieving. I woke up this morning, oh, I cried a little bit. But my outlook on, on this whole situation is grounded in what m both my brother Patrick I'll include my brother James and my sister Stephanie. I think my eight, sister Adrian is still a Christian. The rest of us are not. And do you, I love you all, but if you're Christians and you're offended, I don't care. Okay? I don't know why I went there, but it was something about Pat. But it's just real important to just get that across. Where was I going? See? Okay, yeah, it's about, I don't harbor a lot of what are really fairly normal attitudes and beliefs about death and grieving and what you're supposed to do. And I just think it's trash. And so a big part of what I'm feeling other than the fact that, damn it, this is the last time I saw Patrick was last Saturday and then he's not gonna come over here again. See, that's what it is. It's mostly grief and sadness about my loss. When I think about my brother Patrick and his health and how he wouldn't listen to anybody and how poor health he apparently was in, that's a different feeling. Well, that's done with. He doesn't have the body to deal with because he wasn't dealing with it. So that really keeps me from... Of course, you know, once I go to the apartment to empty it out, it'll probably be a big crying session. I've made a decision I'm going to go to my family who own a restaurant here. But they're big Christians, okay, big mamas. This is after talking to some folks yesterday. I'm going to go to them today and see if they will work with me to do a memorial with for Patrick at the restaurant, but with no Christian reverend officiating, because that would insult my brother and I. And I'm already prepared for this sort of thing. Well, why don't you have him? Don't you want to have him for the family? I'm telling you, I'm family. We don't want it. I know if, if, if it was for your part of the family, then it's not for Patrick. I hate the blindness of organized religious dogma. I hate it. My emotions are raw, and I don't in mind <laughs> you seeing or hearing what's on my mind, okay? And if any motherfucker dares to leave some bullshit comment on here, let that be him putting us, him or her, put a spell on themselves. I've been hesitating to say this because words are powerful. But let you reap what you sow. If you, ever, if you haven't gotten the message that you picked the wrong guy to have been picking on for years with your motherfucking lies, if you want to come back here with more bullshit for me, take it and receive what you've given. A lot of pain you have. You, you have hurt me, motherfuckers. It's also partially for my brother because he knows the story and you know. <laughs> he said, who are these motherfuckers? Let's go get them. I said, no, I don't even know who they are. That's, that's what makes it even worse. They don't know a fucking thing about me. Thank you folks for understanding. This has been a wait you know, racist, cowardly, uh, anonymous, low-life slime. Think they got to, oh, we're, we're going to fix that nigger. That's exactly what it's about. I've dealt with it so much in my life here in Omaha, which is racist to the bone, and yet I have such a deep foundation of love here all colors, 
whole lot of white people. Pretty much the whole damn black community. Okay. I I remain humbly humble because that is the person I am. I'm not boastful, but as I was talking at the t the funeral home, and uh, the deacon that was also there helping, they just said, "Well, damn, you just famous." And I said, "Well, yeah, well, well, yes, I am. I have the part of the fame that I want. I don't have any money, but that's not what I ever wanted about the Beatles thing. The Beatles, Beatlemania, has completely shaped my way I see the world. And the part of Beatlemania that I wanted, I got, is recognition for what I do, honest recognition for what I do. It's being a good artist." good artist it's 20 minutes people I better be quiet because I could keep talking okay you talk to me and be well this weekend